The Haunted Palace by Edgar Allan Poe. In the greenest of our valleys by good angels tenanted, once a fair and stately palace, radiant palace, reared its head. In the monarch thought's dominion it stood there. Never seraph spread a pinion over fabric half so fair. Banners yellow, glorious, golden, on its roof did float and flow. This, all this, was in the olden time long ago. And every gentle air that dallied in that sweet day, along the ramparts plumbed and pallid, a winged odor went away. Wanderers in that happy valley, through two luminous windows saw, spirits moving musically to a lute's well-tuned law. Round about a throne where, sitting, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that word. What? Let's see. Porphyrogeny. Okay. Porphyrogene or porphyrogeny. Yeah. Okay. One of the two. <clears throat> Round about a throne where, sitting, Pyronogy. In state his glory well befitting, the ruler of the realm was seen. And all with pearl and ruby glowing was the fair palace door, through which came flowing, 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 and sparkling evermore, a troop of echoes whose sweet duty was but to sing, in voices of surpassing beauty, the wit and wisdom of their king. But evil things in robes of sorrow assailed the monarch's high estate, Ah, let us mourn, for never morrow shall dawn upon him desolate. And round about his home the glory that blushed and bloomed is but dim remembered a story of old time entombed. And travelers now within that valley, through the red lead and... <clears throat> and travelers now within that valley, through the red lit and window see, vast forms that move fantastically to a discordant melody. While like a ghastly rapid river through the pale door, a hideous throng rush out forever and laugh but smile no more. Good Very stuff. Cool. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Only Poe, man. Only Poe. So, this story, or poem, Slash poem. <laughs> this poem was published in April of 1839. Again, in American Museum Magazine, same that he published a predicament. Mm. And it was only a few months later that he, pub that he published The Fall of the House of Usher. Ooh. So this I'm was not that... sure where Fall of the House of Usher was published. Um, but... The three things, I mean, first of all, a, a, how to write a Blackwood article in a predicament were very, very extremely critical of Gothic style. Mm -hmm. And then he turns around and writes a poem called The Haunted Palace and then writes The Fall of the House of Usher, which are... Where was his brain at? <laughs> supreme, well, it, All over the place, apparently. It, you know, mm -hmm. both are, are supreme examples of Gothic style. Mm -hmm. Very well-written Gothic style. Yes. So, what was going on? <laughs> well, it sounds like he had a case of the Blue Man Group, or rather the Blue Man Group had a case of Edgar Allan Poe, because this Blue Man Group ends up being modern artists that sit there and make fun of modern art. <laughs> yeah. But that's basically what Poe was doing. He mm -hmm. took time to be critical of a genre that he was good at. Because, who knows? But I think having a sense of humor towards what you're good at is still, I think, healthy. <laughs> yeah. Especially because, like, in comparison to what we previously, previously read of Poe, dark comedy, highly critical, extremely absurd... I think he understood that a lot of culture is a combination of these things, and that's just being human. Mm -hmm. And it's also really human to be like, oh, they want another gothic story? Because <laughs> 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 I think even, like, as a graphic designer, 
Oh, you want me to throw a circle around it? Yeah. Ugh, like you just deal with things like that. You want me to use papyrus? There are those things that end up being kind of tropes mm -hmm. in your life. And I definitely can see how you can be just as much at odds with whatever you're good at and still enjoy it and love it. I think that's okay. actually just a full part of being human mm -hmm. is having the full experience <laughs> of the frustration of that's constantly what the people want, but also knowing you're good at it and just rolling with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So then the poem itself, um, it's kind of where he, he's talking about a castle and he's talking about the things that happened in the past mm -hmm. as haunting the atmosphere of the castle mm -hmm. they started out to be positive yes with you know fun parties and mm -hmm. great people and great deeds and such. a blessed land but it becomes corrupted towards the end mm -hmm. to the point of someone but evil things and robes of sorrow. And we don't know if that corruption is an assassination. Because you see things that say, but evil things and robes of sorrow assailed the monarch's high estate. Mm -hmm. Is it political corruption? Is it the monarch's corruption? Is it war? Or maybe it's just death or just pestilence death? like yeah. Mask of the Red Death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you don't get a solid idea of what this evil thing in robes of sorrow. Is it the Reaper? He probably does have it in there if you want to take the time to really yes. um, analyze every word of this poem. Mm -hmm. But they, so it must not be the king himself because they say the wit and wisdom of their king. Mm -hmm. So if the king's wise, he's probably not doing anything intentional to cause political upheaval. Sounds okay. like he was assassinated. Okay. Or just like died and then someone else took over or it just the kingdom died because he did. Mhm. Mm Who knows? A hideous throne so you, rush you out. You do forever. often have that if you have a really great leader. Mm -hmm. Things are great at first, but then, you know, as they age or you know, or if they get assassinated or whatever, then whatever they built does become corrupted by the people underneath trying to keep it going but not really understanding what that leader was doing. Yes. But then they also have this, and travelers now within that, the whole last stanza, and travelers now within that valley through the red lit and windows see vast forms that move fantastically to a discordant melody. But mm -hmm. while like a ghastly rapid river through the pale door, a hideous throng rush out forever and laugh but smile no more. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like the people did it. Mm -hmm. Like they're having a party. So we assassinated <laughs> the king and then danced in his blood. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's how I interpret that. Okay. But I mean, it is just vague enough that it seems open, more open to interpretation. It could go yes. any way. Diff any such ways mm -hmm. so it could be false laughter because they want to be happy but they're not because <laughs> they say it because mm -hmm. king did who knows who knows but like any poem written by a growling pole even if you don't really understand what he's talking about it's just a joy to read especially if you read it aloud mm -hmm. um, sound onomatopoeia was extremely important to what he did in poetry yes and you hear that in all of his poems mm -hmm. he really and he really is so beautiful he's so good at building a mood and still having rhymes mm -hmm. and oh i can't remember which and he of. brought it into his prose <clears throat> yes and a lot of his stories and sometimes his... i love in his stories he even throws a poem or two in there oh yeah i yeah. love that kind of They'll stuff be right in the middle of it yeah even when like when tolkien I, that i eat that shit up <laughs> like <laughs> tolkien throws a song in the middle of his book i'm like yeah i'm gonna read it six times <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and aloud if i can manage it mm -hmm. but yeah definitely enjoy i and i am one of those people who really does enjoy poetry a lot poe was yeah. actually probably the first poet i really began to enjoy my second was shel silverstein <laughs> I love Shel Silverstein. <laughs> okay. He has some great, funny, and some very serious and thoughtful 
stories Mm -hmm. that come out of his poetry. But this is definitely a beautifully done gothic. Very romantic. Mm -hmm. Top tale. Okay. But yeah. And it definitely, like, even reading it aloud, like, I feel, internally, I feel the mood Mm -hmm. as I read it. Mm Mm-hmm. It's just so good. Yeah, some of his others, like, I've read The Conqueror Worm on here mm-hmm. before. That one's like that. The Bells is extremely like that. Mm-hmm. The City and the Sea is really good. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorites of his. Yes. And I love, of course, some of his classics, too, like The Raven. Well, yeah. Of course. <laughs> of course. It is almost the... We, I think, as an introduction, it is ideal. Mm-hmm. But it is not his most ideal poem. Okay. I think his work is so vast and fantastic. Like, you have to read all of his poetry to really figure out what is really, like, <clears throat> the pivotal, iconic poem for you. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of poetry, is that it so speaks to people so differently. Mm-hmm. And it hits, it hits different for everyone. Mm-hmm. But I have to say, this is a fantastic poem by Poe. Yes. I really enjoy it. Yes. So, top tale. Mm-hmm. With a great story. A great, mysterious, dark story. And so, so. our next Poe, moving along, moving. will be The Devil in the Belfry. I've never read that one. It'll be I've never read that one either. Ooh, I'm excited. Yeah, it's it's got That's a cool Davis. title. <laughs> or something like it. So, yeah. I really don't have more to say. Poe's just fantastic. Nope. I yeah. read it to, for you. That's what I had to say. That's why we like it so much. Mm-hmm. So, thanks for joining us, guys. Like, subscribe. Tell us what Poe stories and or poems that you love. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>